We don't even, I mean, real doesn't even do gossip. I just want to know for myself. I don't know. I'll, I'll tell you what my aunt told me. My, my, my 81 year old aunt, Ellen, said that uh, the secret to a long marriage is separate televisions. And I think it's true. I think it's true. It's good to know. It's good to know. Uh, the fun thing about this movie is you play the voice, and that's a different thing for you because yeah, usually you, you we only get Doug Jones in pieces. And, <laughs> and this time, uh, yes, it's the voice. I'm uh, Brittany Hudson, the star of the movie, and I play a voice that haunts in his mind. Or is it outside, really? In the house, outside the house, in the silo? We don't know for sure. So, uh, yeah, that was a fun. The director and writer, Phil Don, is a very dear friend of mine. Hey, what's up, man? And he's, yeah. He's, yeah. He's, uh, very sweet. You know, once once you saw a couple of voices get taken away from me, I was like, thank you. He said, you know what? I'm gonna write something for you to be a voice in. Darn it! So, uh, so, uh, it's a good friend. Yeah. But now your voice will be used in Homeboy Two, right? Homeboy Two, you'll be hearing me as Dave Safe in the role of Dave Safe. Yeah. And I'm also playing two other parts in the film: uh, uh, the Angel of Death and the Chamberlain. So, July 11th. July 11th. Gotta see Homeboy Two: The Golden Army. It's gonna blow your pants off. What will fans of the first Hellboy? I mean, is it, is it totally different? It's totally different. It's totally better, actually, than the first one. Um, um, the fans from the first movie will get more, uh, uh, more BTR in between time, like more buddy time between uh, Abe and Hellboy and Anthony Fisher and Tom Manning are. Jeffrey Campbell is like, I love, love you, Jeffrey. Uh, uh, we more and more interaction between all of us and the brother sister time among us as a family. And um, you'll get more action. And my, my, I, have, I get to take a weapon this time, more action with the bad guys. And I love it. It's a little, a little elven princess. Her name is Princess New York. And I played by Anna Walton, a beautiful British actress. She was long and leggy and roomy and all that. She and she and Abe found each other. Uh, I'm framing you guys. It's exactly what I'm doing here. That's not a dictatorial. The dictatorial would be like, ah! Yeah, that's oh, that's a producer look. Yeah, no, let's get the producer in here. Yeah, we can do that together. Yeah, come here, Steve. This is the producer, oh, Steve Howard. Yeah. Steve, what's going on the internet? Steve! Not. And, and gentlemen, right in front of you. I don't know. I the same movies that everyone else is hearing on the internet that that is writing a script for, which is he's a wonderful writer and creator. I see what you like. Four hours. O R D. O D W. Yes, sir. So, so it's crazy. My film is kind of in the vein of like an old and that's what we're really trying to do here. We're trying to kind of like throw back to all the shit film and put it on its track. So, and when we started the project, so we started it, we were very interested in doing something like that. Dealing with the issues of race. Um, but um, how we thought society was sort of like, you know, right, right now, and what it means now. So what is what is racism like right now? And that was the uh, uh, the birth uh, process of it. But uh, the, you know, for me directorially, the thing was to get sort of like a and sort of like sort of sort of the awesome Um, it's definitely a Sort of, I don't know. That's how I felt. The way I shot it, the way that the film actually started.
starts tight and opens up at the end in the shots. So the idea was in most of was is that it starts in big wide shots, like New York City, you know, whatever, you know, you zoom in on your store, so you're going to start here in the mind and open up as the character opens so, um, so the message of the film is sort of like a lot of mind and uh, how paranoia can really sort of uh, get to you and uh, what that looks like. So it's sort of in the style of like a raging bull. Like oh, yeah. 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 This is a great question. What I think people uh, take away from this film really is something that is not in the conventional norm that we see movies made in. This is a very unique film. Phil Donald, the director, uh, worked with him. It's been a unique experience because he's a really true really artist and a real true filmmaker in every sense of the word, in my humble opinion. I when I was it. It. So we spent about, you know, six months in a very dark room dealing with a very dark subject. It was very intense. Um, so the way it was visually, um, the way it appears uh, visually, the way it was shot was very unconventional. Um, it's very Hitchcockian in its approach. It's very suspenseful. So it's not a normal story uh, being told in a very conventional narrative sense. So what I'd like people to take away from the film is, um, well, not only is the story a little bit different, but it's it's intensely emotional, for sure. And Ernie Hudson is a performance of what I think is of a lifetime. And I've seen him in Basketball Diaries with Leonardo DiCaprio. I've seen him in Pro. Um, I've seen him in The Rocket Cradle, which I thought was amazing. His performance for me really stood out because he brought something to it that I don't think anybody, any audience has ever seen. As a matter of fact, there was a scene in this movie in which he was breaking down, similar to um, De Niro and Raging Bull. And I happened to be right there on set when he was doing this. And I felt the emotional intensity that he was exuding, and it was extraordinary. So that's one thing. I, I think people really take away from this film a new side of it, which I think the, uh, the world is more than ready to see. So those are just a couple of things. Um, but I really also was tired of the Joey Del Rocky of this truly spectacular. And with Phil combined with um, his aesthetic sensibilities with Joey combined as an editor, I mean, I think just the, with the chemistry between us is very unique and special, and you don't find that every day, and that's why people in filmmaking tend to stay with each other for a long period of time. So I hope that answers the question a little bit. An art house film? Um, yeah, it depends on how you define that, but yeah, it's. I've heard of artsy used many times. I mean, it's not going to be, you know, it's not a, it's not a mainstream type of film. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah.